Whoever came up with that message, come home, really seemed to do a good idea. I, 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 what really seemed to be a smart idea, because as I was talking with voters in Wisconsin and, and elsewhere, they recited that. That message really seemed to resonate, despite some voters' uh, concerns about Donald Trump. Well, I, I think it resonated for a couple of reasons. First of all, most Americans wanted change. Uh, this should have been a change election. Almost two thirds of Americans think our country's going the wrong direction. Been over 60 percent for more than three years. Secondly, a lot of people did not want to vote for Secretary Clinton, but were uncomfortable with Donald Trump. And then they decided that the combination of change, which they wanted, and a president of their own party overcame their reservations about Donald Trump. And, and we, you could see that as the numbers were moving in October, little by little. Mm -hmm. And then, then that last week, uh, a little bit more, uh, a little bit faster. A New York Times today uh, wrote this. What is amazing is how many times the news media has missed the populist movements that have been rocking national politics since at least 2008. It failed initially to see the rise of the Tea Party, which led to the Republican wave of elections in 2010 and 2014. And it was supposed to be the year of so called Republican establishment regain control over its intra party insurgency. How did so many people, pollsters, media, you name it, fail to see what was bubbling under the surface? Well, I think they saw the anger and the fear, the dissatisfaction, not only among Republicans, but remember Bernie Sanders got 43 percent of the Democratic primary vote. So in both parties, there was a lot of dissatisfaction. I think what people just failed to see that it would continue all the way through. I think a lot of people thought, here is uh, Donald Trump, people are mad, they're attracted to him, but sooner or later they'll start looking for solutions and they'll maybe go to somebody else. Well, that did not happen. And Trump, you, you got to give Trump credit. Uh, he, he stayed with what he thought would win and his people thought would win, and that was to go into the industrial Midwest and win back voters who had voted for Ronald Reagan, but certainly weren't re weren't Republicans, mm -hmm. many of them, and and those people stayed with him. What their uh, their political bosses in Mi Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania yep. could not dislodge them. Yeah, certainly. Uh, what happens to some of those never Trumpers? You know, we had some radio talk show hosts that were the never Trumpers. We have Ben Sass, the senator from Nebraska, as well as Lindsey Graham, who, by the way, have congratulated Donald Trump today. But what happens to that entire movement? Well, I think Donald Trump wants to get things done. I think that's his first priority. He wants to make America great again, which means he wants to get things done. He does not want to be like Obama, who most of what he has done, particularly after the first two years, was done by executive order, which can be reversed by the new president with literally the stroke of a pen. So that means he wants Congress to pass things that will achieve what he wants. A better economy, more better paying jobs, safer streets. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, you, you know the, the message that he has. Yeah. But he's got to have Congress working with him. He's well, blessed Paul with Well, Paul Ryan today, the House Speaker, said that he would be happy to work with him, open the door, and was very gracious himself, despite all the flaps that those two uh, gentlemen have had. So uh, we will certainly be watching that. Haley Barber, former chairman of the RNC and governor of Mississippi. Haley, thank you. Thank you, Haley.